بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Imam Zaid Shakir I'm here at the Zaytuna Institute and on behalf of Zaytuna Institute is staff, workers, scholars we'd like to welcome you to this the first in a series of monthly video casts by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf During each episode Sheikh Hamza will present timely advice to the general community and share his reflections on the prophetic guidance. We pray that this video cast will reach billions of people and be a source of guidance and direction, clarity for multitudes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al-Ali al-Azim Alhamdulillah I first want to thank Imam Zaid for his words and his efforts May Allah bless him and increase him in tawfiq and secondly thank everyone who has been supportive of our work our joint work as well as the work of Zaytuna Institute we have a lot of really good people working there we have a lot of great students that are coming there and also uh, increasingly teachers that are of a very high caliber and we hope to see inshallah in the future uh, something very very significant one of the things that I'd like to say is that an immense amount of work has gone into Zaytuna that we're, this is our tenth year uh, almost and um, basically a lot of groundwork has been done particularly in the last few years and so I'm really looking forward and I think a lot of people are very excited about what's going to happen in the very near future but a lot of that is dependent on continued support and inshallah increased support so we really may Allah bless all the people that are helping us to achieve these goals secondly I think this is definitely a difficult time for Muslims um, it, it's arguable that there's never been a time that it wasn't difficult for Muslims but we should always keep in mind Allah's words uh, with hardship is ease uh, that they go together and there's an immense amount of facilitation as well as hardship so I think it's really important for us to to focus on a lot of those blessings and recognize that the challenges of the world are always there and that what Allah is challenging us to do is to rise up to that level uh, of the challenge and really overcome these challenges and secondly, that the Muslims themselves, I mean, there was a recent article in the Herald Tribune, it, sa it said that it was a, this is a hard time to be called Ahmed in America. But my response to that title is, it's a good time to be called Ahmed anywhere, in any place, in any time. So I think people should be proud of their Islam. The Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya recently, when he was asked in Denmark uh, about uh, one of these terrorists or what this that or the other he just said why are you asking me what does he have to do with me uh, I, we're, we're from a Muslim community of 1.4 billion people and what some individuals do does not reflect on our community and I'm not guilty of any crime and I've done nothing wrong so I don't I take objection to the question and I think it's important for Muslims to have that understanding Muslims generally have done nothing wrong and uh, the Quran says I swear by this land and you are a, a legitimate citizen of this land so we're all here on the earth together and it's important for Muslims not to forget that that uh, while it is a difficult time it's still a time of great facilitation and ease from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and most of us are in immense blessings and we should really count those blessings so secondly um, I, inshallah I'm gonna uh, look at some of these hadith in the content of character and this is a collection of hadith that was done by Sheikh Al-Amin Ali uh, Mazru'i uh, from a very notable family in uh, East Africa 
and he's the father of a very uh, notable scholar in America called Ali Mazroui, Dr. Ali Mazroui. And he, he did this collection because he wanted to emphasize the ethical character of the Prophet and in a time, in an era in which our Prophet is being maligned constantly. And not only maligned by his enemies, but also poorly represented by his friends, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I think it's important that we get back to the root of our prophetic teaching. And it's important to remember that his core teaching has two important principles. The first one is correct understanding, how we understand the world and how we align our understanding with reality so that our actual thoughts and perceptions of the world are congruent with the reality of the world as opposed to being in a delusional state which is the state of the vast majority of human beings and the Quran warns us لا يغرنك بالله الغرور don't be deluded by the one who deludes who, uh, that element in the world, shaitan, that puts people into delusional states from both humans and also the, the, uh, the spirit world and the second aspect of the Prophet Sallallahu core prophetic teaching is right action and right action is predicated upon right understanding now, ethics is the science of right action. It, ethics is the tool by which we use in order to have a standard or a criterion for what is right and what is wrong. And there are two basic branches of ethics. There, there's a moral ethics that, that is rooted in what we would probably call natural law. And then there's prophetic ethics or revelatory ethics, which is rooted in the idea of a revelation from God. The natural ethics is something many, many people agree on. Things like honesty, virtue, all these things. These are universal principles and they're important. But in Islam, what we have is a criterion for right and wrong. And that criterion is, is called a furqan. It's the ability to discriminate between right and wrong. And it's not always an easy thing to do, but in the Quran we are promised that if you have this God consciousness, Allah will give you this furqan and give you the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. And one of the problems that I see and, it, and really consider it to be probably one of the gravest problems in the Muslim world today and amongst Muslims generally is that we have fallen far from the ethical stature that we once had. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuntum khaira ummah ukhrijat linnas. You were the best ummah. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Ta'muruna bin ma'roof. You enjoin virtue. And you prohibit vice. You enjoin what? And it's very interesting that it, it's that, that you command to, you enjoin upon others because you yourselves are practicing it. And then you also tell people not to do what is wrong. And you believe in God. And th these are the qualities that give people uh, uh, this, this uh, elected status. But the idea of enjoining right means that you're practicing it because people often think ta'muruna bil ma'ruf means that you enjoin right with your tongue. That's not always the state. The Arabs say lisan al-hal ablaghu min lisan al-maqal. The tongue of one's condition is far more eloquent than the tongue uh, of speech. In other words, that there's a commanding or an enjoining right that is the embodiment of right. When the Prophet uh, they asked his wife, how would you describe the Prophet, his ethical character? She said, Kana khuluqu al Quran. His character was the Quran. In other words, he was the embodiment of the word. So if you're not the embodiment of the word, the word becomes hollow. And, and that's part of the problem is our, our, our Muslim community, we often fail to embody the, the high principles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And when people see us, they, 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 they don't see us as people with moral capital. And when they see us bankrupt, the Arabs say, فَاقِدُ شَيْنْ لَا يَعْطِي Somebody who doesn't possess something can't give it. So at the root of our, a real crisis in our community is a crisis of ethics. We have a crisis of ethics. There was, uh, I, I, recently uh, there was a, uh, a news broadcast and, and they, what they did is they took a hidden camera and put it in, in a car and they went to valets 
and, and what they found is a lot of valets were rummaging in people's cars to steal things and people hand you their keys to a valet and they never think about anything. And there was recently a man who went and stalked a woman. He, he got the key to her house from, he was a valet. He got the key to the house from the car and went and stalked her. But in, in, in this news thing, they had a Muslim man who was the valet who was rummaging through to look for money. And it's just sad that that, that we have, and every community has bad people, but unfortunately, we